Welcome to Missions Monday with Pastor Brent Oliver from Delphi First Assembly of God and Kokomo Southview Church. Today, we are blessed to share with you God's news of what is going on in various parts of the world. Welcome to Missions Monday, and uh, today I have with me Stephen Belkus Lehman. Uh, they are uh, Chi Alpha Campus Missionaries. Uh, Stephen Belkus, welcome today. I appreciate you being Thank with you. me. Thanks for having us. Um, I'd like for our audience just to hear a little bit about your ministry, and I know both of you have specific focuses, so uh, let's look at what God's doing. Uh, you can give a little bit of history if you want, where you've kind of been and the ministry you've had, and then what's going on now. You want to go ahead? Well, we started uh, in Chi Alpha in local ministry at Eastern Michigan University. Steve was there as a single campus missionary from 1989. <laughs> uh, we got married in 92 and then stayed on till 06. Okay. Then after that, from 06 to 2015, why don't you say what we did then? Well, we, we moved to Indiana. Um, uh, and I took up a role over five states trying to get Chi Alpha going. And we uh, picked Indiana because Indiana had a lot of need at the time. And so um, the Lord was gracious and helped us to, to be able to, to see the implementation of about 50 ministries in the Great Lakes, including Notre Dame and places like that, IU. Um, and uh, then after nine and a half years of that, uh, well, actually, towards the end of that, God was stirring up some stuff in Belkis. And to yap about that a little bit, why don't you talk about? Uh, so in, about 10 years ago, uh, we launched uh, a national diversity task force in Chi Alpha, just really thinking, OK, how can we do a better job reaching every student on campus and being mm -hmm. God's people on campus? Um, and uh, I was part of that and I took over its leadership in 2014 and then in 2015, entered into a full-time role as the national diversity director so I've been doing that now for almost six years you should tell them what you do with that well well why don't we catch everybody up what are you doing and what, what am i doing, doing? what well, are you doing steve <laughs> well right now i'm about, about to grab my cup of coffee there you uh, go. yeah so well with with uh, the national diversity piece part of what belkis needs to do is help to implement ministry on historically black colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to her, listen, um, why don't we just move somewhere that I can help create a model of what it means for a, a white guy to try to go do ministry on one of these campuses. We need people who will go and do that. Not mm -hmm. just white people, we just need people in general. Sure. And so uh, Winston-Salem State University, the Lord pointed out to me one morning and um, we had never been here before, but moved here, and God's uh, God graciously helped us to start ministry not only there, but also at Wake Forest University and Salem College. We have ministry expressions as well. So um, moving here, it was a chance to really lean into what Belkis is doing nationally by creating a model. And since that time, I think it's probably helped a few other ministries get started realizing it's possible. Yeah. I think you have to, you know, there's things that keep things from happening, whether, you know, you look at Indiana was kind of maybe a little stuck mm -hmm. on campus ministry wise when we went there. And it's like, well, why is that? You know, what, what makes it stuck? And, you know, like everything that's multifaceted, it's, you know, spiritual and it's, it's leadership and it's, you know, uh, history, you know, there's just everything kind of is working together. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. a city can seem stuck and it's like, Oh, that you know, the gospel is never going to flourish there, but then something will come and, and unstick, you know, stick it because it's just a perfect convergence of things. Yeah. And so for us in Chi Alpha, we were kind of, I think, a little stuck when it comes to historically black colleges. When I came into this role, we were on one campus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why? Well, why is that? Well, it's so many reasons uh, for that. But we just started working at doing a lot of promotion, a lot of prayer and, and a lot of recruitment of just saying, hey, let's you know, hey, these are campuses are important. Let's go there. And I think for us spiritually, by us coming and saying, okay, well, we're going to invest our lives. We're not super young and, uh, mm. and not, you know, and not very black uh, <laughs> at all. You know, got a little heritage going on here and there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you kind of make that faith commitment, I think it just kind of sometimes breaks things loose spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so we are now this year going to be launching on uh, another two campuses, actually maybe three. 
So we're going to be up to eight campuses. No, not you and I. Not you, you and I. You're just nationally. Teams. Nationally, yeah. we're, we're launching teams. Uh, you know, we have a couple different strategies. We work one is satellite ministries, which is there's an established Chi Alpha ministry, and they they start a ministry on a, a second a satellite ministry on a nearby campus, mm -hmm. and then we just send teams. And you know, it's really funny because I thought, well, a satellite that's easy. We'll get a bunch of those started, but really, we're getting more teams, which is amazing. And so God is raising up young black men and women, um, some mm -hmm. Latinos too, some you know majority people, and they're going into historically black colleges and launching there. And, um, and it's just, it's a really great atmosphere. It's a place where you, it's a little scary. I'll, I'll just mm -hmm. be honest. It's a little scary for people. It's scary for everybody because I've taken, you know, black folk to HBCUs and they're a little scared to be there even because there's just spirits at work, you know, and it's like, am I black enough to come to this campus, you know, and, and stuff like that. When you say uh, black enough, what, what, uh, tell me what oh, you really you know, mean there's just that. a lot of. You know, I, I think there's a lot of complexities in being an ethnic minority. Mm -hmm. And like, let's say for me as a Cuban born outside the U.S., but living here, if I meet another Cuban who's from Cuba and just moved last week, well, they don't seem as very Cuban. Mm. You know, I'm not Cuban enough for them. Okay. And then maybe for somebody else who's like, and maybe like in my same generation, but they don't speak Spanish, mm -hmm. then I might think, oh, I'm more Cuban than them. So we tend to put ourselves on continuums of how strong we are within that ethnicity. And I think that's true for every group, whether they're like Asian Americans, I say Chinese Americans or, or even black Americans, you know, mm -hmm. there's this, you know, how, you know, I think, you know, the show blackish, which I don't really watch, but it kind of speaks to that, you know, like, how are we still black or are we just more blackish now? Mm -hmm. So I think there's that within the culture. And then, you know, there's that perception of students at historically black colleges are like uber black. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not at what at those campuses, maybe I, I'm not going to fit in. And so, uh, but it's all just really, it's not real, you know, because yeah. we go there and we're just, you know, I, I've never had a bad experience. You know, sometimes people look at you like, oh, what are they doing here? Because it's obvious we're not students. You can be a student. There are non-Black students at historically Black colleges, but we're not students. We're really old, you know. And so, you know, people say, kind of give you that wondering look, but, you know, they're also very accepting. And, yeah. and the great thing about the Black culture is it's very influenced by the church. Mm -hmm. And so you, I, I've been on predominantly white campuses or, you know, PWIs, predominantly white institutions. And, you know, I've, I made a student and I say, hey, can I pray for you? And I've had people say, no, please do not pray for me. I don't want you praying for me. I've never had that happen at a historical black college. Mm -hmm. Everybody will let you pray for them. Everybody is interested, you know, in hearing about Jesus, wherever they're at. They may be like living like the devil, mm -hmm. but they will listen to you. Everybody respects you as a pastor. So it's a very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's got some dynamics there that make it an amazing place for campus ministry to flourish. You know, a lot of it is unknown. You know, it's an unknown commodity. I had a pastor ask me the other day, well, why, why, why did they even have these institutions? And really, I think that's the wrong question. Um, it's kind of- well, uh, We have them for historical reasons. Oh, right. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> you know, the, the church, especially y'all's church, which, by the way, very graciously has been supporting us, I think, since 2007. Um, the church has sent missionaries all over the world to do all kinds of things. Yeah. We rarely ask the missionary, now, why in the world is that school there or that institution there that you're going to go reach? The, the fact is it's there. It needs to be reached. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'll just quickly tell you about the school that, that we saw something started on the first one, uh, Winston-Salem State. Uh, when we went there, 36% graduation rate. 36%. Mm. Uh, many of those folks, first generation of, of, their, of their family to go to school. Um, uh, the majority women. And, and so the, the, the need list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And so the church of Jesus Christ, which has done such a great job of reaching all over the world, now has an opportunity to reach these places in our own country right. that have been underserved. So, so you know, reaching historically black colleges, that's a small, that's one of three things that I focus on in my role. The other is equipping our leaders to build multi-ethnic ministries. We want every Chi Alpha group to reach every student on their campus. Sure. And it's not easy. That's why we have the letter of the Romans, the letter of the Galatians, the letter of the Ephesians, because when you bring a church, 
of you build a church of like different ethnic groups, you're going to have situations that you have to have theology to undergird that. You're going to have to explain things. You can have to have practicality to, to walk it out. Uh, and then the other thing is I'm wearing this shirt today because this is part of our campaign is we have the people who are unreached and we have the people we send, but sometimes we have the people who are unsent. So most of missions is white majority people. Uh, 90, uh, less than 1% of missionaries are African-American and it's not really a lot more for other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. So in Kayako, we're making an effort of saying, hey, if we're the body of Christ, we should all be working together in the mission of Christ. It's, it's silly to think one part of the body can fulfill Christ's mission. We really need the whole body coming together to do that. Yeah. Well, and in our in our uh, country today, uh, there's so much division and racism and everything else. For you to be just uh, rather than running away from that, you guys are running towards that. And, um, and the church really can provide the answer if any day uh, Christians ought to be stepping up and uh, letting the light be seen. And I I'm thinking about what you're doing and I'm thinking, you know what, it's hard for people to reject someone that comes in and cares about them. Right. And, yeah. and how much more do we need to show that, actively show that? And so it seems like that's exactly what you're doing. So more campuses, diversity around the country, all of that, a lot of really good things going on, sharing the gospel, uh, letting Jesus be seen through people. Uh, I appreciate you spending time and just sharing with us a little bit about what's going on with you guys, uh, both of you. And uh, obviously God's used you. Uh, I've watched it over the years. Um, some very effective ministry and raised up a lot of teams uh, only eternity will tell how many people have been reached because of uh, the labors that God's brought around you and you've been able to send out. Guys, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for what you do. And uh, God bless you today. And uh, we'll end this. But uh, once again, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you all. Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. Uh, this has been brought to you by Delphi First Assembly of God in Kokomo Southview Church. To contact us or send us your prayer request, testimony of answered prayer, or Bible questions, please see the information on the screen. May God's salvation through Jesus Christ overflow into your life with His joy. God bless until we see you again.